Alright everybody, um, it's been a while since I made a tutorial, but um, I've got a little bit of time on my hands, so I thought I'd make you guys another one. Um, since I've been doing these, by far the most popular was the uh, ES2 Dirty Baseline uh, tutorial, so I thought I'd treat you to a little bit more badass bass. Um, this time I'm going to be using uh, Ultrabeat. I just want to show you how Ultrabeat's actually got some pretty cool features as a synthesizer as well as, as a drum machine, um, so it can be used for both, although obviously it's usually used for drums. Um, I'm, this is the sound I'm going to be making. It's quite a lot of fun. Um, and the reason I've sort of made this sound is just to show off some of the things you can do in Ultrabeat that you can't do in the ES2. Um, for example, the envelopes. You get loads more control with the envelopes in, um, in Ultrabeat. You can actually draw on your own shapes and that really gives, it, uh, gives you a bit more control over the shape of the sound and the shape of the modulations. The LFOs have also got um, a few features which um, aren't on the ES2 and those can be useful as well for shaping your sound in slightly more interesting ways. So I think that using Ultrabeat combined with the ES2 and combined with other synths you can get a pretty good range of different sounds. Um, I will say that this tutorial is going to um, assume a little bit of knowledge of the of Ultrabeat. It's quite a complex synth but um, there are some good tutorials out there which give you the basics on, on it. Um, I'm not going to do that today because I don't really have time. So I'm just going to assume you have at least some knowledge of the synth. Uh, for the sound I'm making, I've just got one oscillator. This one at the top is set to a phase oscillator. And it's got a little bit of saturation. Um, the two main modulations that are happening are of the asymmetry, which is which shapes, changes the shape of the oscillator like that, and of um, uh, the pitch. Uh, the pitch of that oscillator is also being shaped by envelope 1. So as you can see, the, em the asymmetry is being shaped by envelope 2 and the pitch by envelope 1. So um, if I turn off this modulation here and turn off the filter, we can hear just the effect of envelope 1 on the pitch. So as you can see, it does this boo boo. It's got this sort of uh, flip up at the top, at the start. Um, the, the asymmetry has been modulated by oscillator 2, which as you can see has a sort of late uh, rise and that's, uh, that's the thing that's adding the dirt at the end of this sound, so um, what I'm doing is basically having the sound in almost two parts, the, the uh, initial attack has got that weird um, pitch thing and then later on in the sound you get this dirty sort of sound come through. Uh, next up we've got the filter. Um, I'm doing a sort of wobbly sound because that's what people seem to like um, and they are loads of fun to mess about with. Um, I make music just for fun. I don't really have any plans to be a musician so I just do it for kicks and uh, although the wobble is a little bit old now it's still loads of fun to mess about with. Um, so uh, we've got LFO1 modulating this low pass filter. Got quite a, a lot of resonance and uh, we've got the LFO synced to one eighth notes. Um, we've got this, I've just messed around with this, I quite like the way on this you can actually morph between the LFO shapes, that's something you can't do in the ES2 and it's quite a lot of fun for just uh, tweaking your tweaking your LFO. The other thing I've got set up is the cycles, per sec uh, the cycles um, knob, what this does is it ends the LFO after a certain number of cycles, so I've got it set to 16 and that means that if I hold down the key for more than uh, 16 no 16 um, beats, um, the LFO will actually stop and um, we'll just get the sort of pure sound. So that, I don't know, it just adds an extra um, little interest to the end of the note. So you can hear that here. You see how the end, it just stopped wobbling. Um, that's I just whacked that in because I found it sort of worked with the groove I was building behind here. Um, I've also got this ramp. Um, I, what this does is it um, it means that the LFO itself doesn't take effect until a, a set amount of milliseconds after you press the key. And I, w I want that because we've got this two-part sound. The first part has got this pitch bend, and for that I didn't really want the wobble, the wobbly filter. Um, so anyway. Oh. I'll get rid of that. That's the sound, it's pretty simple, but as you can see, using these envelopes and modulating the pitch, modulating asymmetry and all sorts of other things, um, you can actually do some stuff which you can't do in, in the ES2. And um, 
what I'd like to do is um, um, take sounds from both this and the ES2 to uh, to get some more interest. But for here, for here, I've just made a brief uh, track using that sound that um, we just built, and um, I just threw on a drum beat and got a little bit of pad at the end here just to show it off. Cool. Nothing too exciting, but just um, just messing about, really. Um, if I was uh, going to make this into a full track, probably what I'd do is I'd bounce this down to audio and start chopping about with it. Because although that pitch bend at the top at the, at the start of the note is quite cool, it could get annoying throughout a whole song. So I'd probably um, bounce it down to audio and then chop bits out and mess around with them and sort of um, tweak it a bit so we get a bit more control. Uh, I'd probably also combine it with a few other bass sounds, um, uh, probably some more in Ultra Beat and some in the S2, just to get some more uh, full-on and interesting grooves happening with the bass. Uh, but I hope that's been useful for you guys, and uh, I'll see you again soon. I'm going to start making more tutorials, so uh, hopefully I'll see you pretty soon. Bye then.